Today we're going to be taking a deep dive into the strange world of maps and all the various projections that exist out there. Being a map geek myself, when I was doing the research for this video, I got really into it and I want to share that enthusiasm with you guys in this video. And who knows, maybe by the end of this we will have a better appreciation for why this has become so ubiquitous. And as always, if you guys enjoyed the video, consider dropping a like, subscribing for more, and let's do this. Okay, so my journey began when I came across this map on r slash map porn. It's titled, My Favorite Interpretation of Our World, The Dimaxion Projection. And at first glance, this map seems like a strange kind of origami version of the world. And that's actually exactly what it is. You can fold this back up and this is what it would look like. Now, before going any further into all the different projections and why they exist, you have to understand the compromise every map maker has to choose. So the difficulty here is when you try to project a three-dimensional sphere onto a two-dimensional plane, there's going to be a trade-off. And that trade-off is usually between two different forces. The first is the conformal map projection. So in this case, every angle between two curves that cross each other on the Earth is preserved. So the projection is conformal in the mathematical sense. But that comes at the cost of the equal area map. So this map projection preserves equal area, and it does that generally by distorting land masses to keep the overall size correct. And to prove my point, an equal area map projection cannot be conformal, nor can a conformal map be equal area. So coming back to the Dimaxion world projection, this is a compromise, so it's not exactly a conformal or an equal area map. They're trying to find a good balance point, a good medium, and the sacrifice here is all of this. This whole geometric cutout design helps to eliminate the distortion that otherwise would be there. Another compromise of this map, which is also one of my favorite features, is that it has to give up the north-south top-bottom kind of perspective. And if we come back to Reddit, uh, one of the top comments here is that this is the best map to represent human migration throughout the globe. And that's just a byproduct of this perspective. We can see how people originated in Sub-Saharan Africa, and from that point it was very logical to migrate to the Middle East, Asia, Europe, North America through the land bridge, and so on. Now you can also use this map projection on a different uh, spot of the globe. So in this perspective, we see one continuous ocean. Okay, so that's the Dimaxian projection. It is a compromise, so it's not conformal or equal area. And here's a visual breakdown of that compromise. So if we really zoom in, we can see that the lines aren't perfectly straight. And also the shapes represented by the red circles aren't perfectly equal. But overall, it isn't too bad. It's a compromise. Another very popular map compromise that I'm sure you guys are familiar with is the Robinson projection. This is what the map looks like. It's in a lot of textbooks, way more conventional looking. And here's a detailed breakdown of the actual perspective. So when comparing the circle at the equator to one closer to the pole, it's similar, but there still is both stretching and distortion. So that's the Robinson projection. It's a compromise, much like the Dimaxion projection, but it's way more, um, normal. And according to my research, this is actually the second most popular map projection. And the first most common is the Mercator projection. This is the map everybody loves to hate because it stretches the area of the landmass in the northern and southern hemisphere and the opposite around the equator. But the reason why the Mercator projection is so popular is because it is a conformal map. So it preserves angles, straight lines, making it very useful for navigation while keeping the map itself uh, very conventional looking. And that's the main reason why Google Maps uses this projection. And here's the breakdown. So of course the area is distorted, but the actual shape of all these circles is exactly spot on. And again, comparing it to the Robertson projection, which is a compromise, the land area is much closer tied to reality, but there's a lot of distortion in the actual shape and the angles here. So after going through these projections, I had the question, why not use a spherical map? And what would be the trade-offs in that scenario? So that's exactly what I did. So this one here is the Van Der Grinton projection. And much like the others, this is a compromise map. And if you look at this for a couple of seconds here, you can see a lot of similarities with the Mercator projection. Essentially, the big difference here is they pinch the poles together. 
So I guess that helps a little bit. And here is the actual uh, mathematical breakdown. So we have a lot of size distortion, but the overall shape is relatively kept, but it is still a trade-off. Now this right here is another circular map. It is the Lambert Azimuthal projection. And this one caught my eye because it's an equal area projection. So we can clearly see that the lines and the angles are not anywhere close to being preserved, but the actual land area is preserved. So for example, this is the poles and this is the equator. A ton of distortion, but the actual area is maintained. So yeah, that was a comprehensive look at very interesting world maps and all of the compromises they have to choose between. The Dimaxion map projection is a pretty solid compromise. We can see just how much both the angles and the size are preserved. But in order to do that, they have to chop up the map in this weird way. It is a lot of fun to look at, but I can see why it's not mainstream. But let me know in the comments below which one of these maps is your favorite. If you guys enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.